and welcome to this short question and answer session on the kinesiology department at SUNY Cortland. We're joined today by Dr. Kate Plasic, uh, professor and chair of the kinesiology department at Cortland. Dr. Plasic, thanks very much for uh, spending some time with us. Um, and before we, we dive into learning a little bit more about your department, um, and the opportunities for students at Cortland. I was wondering if you could um, tell us one fun or interesting fact uh, about yourself. Well, I did spend a little time thinking about this in advance. Like, what is fun and or interesting about me? And there's so much, Mike, there's so much. But if I had to pick one random thing about me is that I love to laugh. I'm, I'm fairly witty. I like to make people laugh, but I also probably enjoy laughing at my own self as much as like the joy that it brings when I see other people respond to my ridiculousness. So I'm a big proponent of like laughing 10 minutes a day to extend your life. Um, so yeah, I would say most people that know me would think that I'm kind of a comedian, kind of a, a jokester, if you will. And uh, I like to keep things light. I like to have a good time. And um, I think students sometimes feed off that in the classroom, which is, it's good for me. I know a lot of people in the School of Professional Studies would rank you among the funniest faculty members. All right, and that's what I like hopefully, to hear. <laughs> hopefully, you know, future kinesiology-related uh, majors here uh, can, can take a class with you and, and discover that humor. Um, yeah, they can so, rate me. <laughs> <laughs> talking a, a, about your, your department and all the opportunities um, within the different majors, what type of student would be interested um, in, in the different majors uh, here, here at Cortland, I know there, there are four of them, right? Yeah, so we do, so the Department of Kinesiology is, in essence, the term kinesiology is the study of human movement. And so the four majors that currently exist within our department take a slightly different look at human movement. For example, our most popular major is exercise science. It's by far our largest major. A lot of students that get into exercise science, you know, well, I guess let me let me rewind for a second. When we're talking about the when we're talking about human movement and we're talking about the body. I think people that are fascinated by the human body and want to look at exercise or physical activity or, you know, movement, if you will, are going to be the people that are drawn to our major. You know, maybe you want to look at it at a larger on a larger scale than a cellular level that you might get in biology. So if you want to look at, you know, the heart, the lungs, and how exercise has the ability to impact these various systems in our body, then this is the right major for you. In terms of our majors, again, I was saying exercise science, our largest major, and a lot of students in exercise science use this pathway as a way in which to get into graduate school in a lot of allied health professions. So I write a lot of letters of recommendation, and I know a lot of our faculty in our department write letters of recommendation for students who are interested in physical therapy, occupational therapy, phys physician's assistants. I've had several chiropractic care students. Um, sometimes they go accelerated nursing. That's not the only option. I think the exercise science degree provides you with a lot of background in our field, there's a lot of overlap within all of our majors, but exercise science specifically is going to require a little bit more science, which is going to enable you to fulfill maybe prerequisites that may be required of you should you choose to go on for one of those careers that I mentioned. We also have students that, you know, just love the human body, whether it's physiologically from a biomechanical perspective you name it, and they'll go on and get their master's, maybe then eventually go on and get their PhD if they want to teach. Our second biggest major is fitness development. And this major is really structured around people who want to work in the fitness industry. Predominantly, uh, I would say a good portion of our students are interested in strength and conditioning. So doing this kind of work with, my guess would be more like collegiate or working your way up if you're lucky enough to get into semi-pro or pro sports, but you know, really being able to train and condition athletes as well as the general population. So strength and conditioning or personal training. The nice thing about this major is we do have, you know, this requirement that you're going to have to work in the Student Life Center in various facets and you will work with clients where you're going to have to train a client. And part of this major also requires an internship. So then it's your chance to go out and do some work in the field, maybe make some connections that could hopefully land you a job in the future. Our next 
it's kind of a toss up between our third and fourth most popular major between coaching and sports studies. So the coaching major is really for students that are interested in becoming a collegiate or professional or like, a, let's say a level one soccer coach or track and field coach, whatever it may be. If you have a desire to coach, uh, this would be the major for you. Again, you're going to have an internship experience where you work with a coach on campus and then you'll be required to get off campus, ideally, and again, make some connections in the field working with coaches who could potentially help set you up. And then our last major sports studies is really just taking more of a liberal arts take on human movement. So you're going to look at philosophy and history and psychology and Oh my, I'm blanking on the last one here. History, sociology. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I oh left that one out. As I am a big fan, that's kind of my area <laughs> social psych. So it's kind of funny that I left that out. Um, and occasionally, you know, we'll have students that major in sports studies and minor in communication, or vice versa, because they want to work in broadcast, sports broadcasting, or sports journalism, or you want to be a historian and work at, let's say, the Baseball Hall of Fame, or curate at a museum. We also have quite a bit of students that are interested in pursuing like a master's degree in sport and exercise psychology so they can do some consulting with athletes once they're done. So those are the four majors. Yeah. So a lot of opportunity, it sounds like, diverse opportunities. Um, and I know that, you know, your area of expertise, you started in exercise physiology, right? And then went to sports psychology, as you mentioned. So mm -hmm. Yep. I was way more into the body. <laughs> You're, so you're, I, oh, sorry, Mike, keep cutting you off. No, you're proof of say, what you can do. You're proof of yeah. what you can do. Go on. Yes. Like my whole take was I was fascinated by like exercise and like what exercise does to some of these major systems in our body. And for example, like a major concept in the field is this idea of what is the greatest inhibitor to our VO2 max or our body's ability to utilize oxygen effectively. And the question was always like the heart or the lungs. And so I remember doing one of these tests as like an undergraduate student where I don't know if you've ever done a VO2 max test. They're not very enjoyable. No, you have the, the mm -hmm. mechanism on your mouth, right? Right. So like you're going as hard as you can for as long as you can until basically you give out. And so that we're trying to determine like, you know, how long can you go? And I remember being, you know, signing up to do this as an undergraduate student for extra credit because I was like, oh, OK, I'll do it. And it was so hard. <laughs> like. It was exhausting. And even just thinking back on that experience, I thought, I don't think it was my heart or lungs that quit. It was totally me that quit. <laughs> yeah, like I quit up there before my body was gonna quit. And so I kind of really thought, oh wow, I'm interested in a little bit more about like how the mind really does impact um, our body and our performance. Well, I know that students can can um, you know lead their own VO2 max tests here here at Cortland, and that kind of leads into uh, my next question: What are some of the outlets or experiences that exist for uh, students to pursue in in the kinesiology department here? Well, one thing that's nice about our department is we're large, and we have a lot of people doing a lot of different things. And so, like, let's say you are interested more in like physiology and human performance, and like how does how does temperature or climate or altitude uh, impact your body's ability to perform. We have an exercise physiology lab where you can go in and work with some of our exercise physiology faculty on some of these topics. Or, you know, one of the pieces of equipment that we talked about uh, during our open house on Monday was the Alter-G treadmill, right? So this is a huge opportunity. It's a, it's, it's a pretty fancy piece of equipment and, you know, it was served as kind of a rehabilitative type of uh, tool right so if i'm injured and i still need to do my cardio because let's face it when you don't do cardio it it your gains are going to go away pretty quickly and so you know we can unweight you or you know lower lower the weight or lower the pressure that you're putting on you know your knees your ankles your hips when you're running so that you can still be active let's say if you you know experience some kind of injury so there's research going on with that if you're interested in more like gait or movement. You know, we have a biomechanics lab where, you know, Dr. Bauer has been looking at exercise and Parkinson's research. Dr. Dames is really into, you know, various issues with respect to gait. Um, and Dr. McGinnis, you know, wrote a textbook on biomechanics. So we got some really impressive people in biomechanics. And then our other lab is our motor behavior lab. And so 
there are a lot of similarities with motor behavior and sports psychology, but like looking at, you know, motor skills and motor skill performance and learning and acquiring um, different skill sets via practice. So we have those three labs. Um, and in addition to those labs, you know, we have a young, vibrant faculty that have all sorts of interests that might be doing something slightly different in those spaces or working with one another. So the opportunities right now to get involved for students are are plentiful. Vast. It's great. And yeah. you can earn funding too, right, to, to pursue research? Yeah, so I was thinking about how many people in our department through the Undergraduate Research Foundation have actually gotten this the you know the the grant essentially that goes along with it. And I know I've gotten one, Dr. Lynn, Dr. Hokinson, Dr. Bauer, Dr. Dame. So a lot of us are familiar with applying for that grant and then have worked with students, you know, to get their quote unquote hands on research, which really is invaluable because regardless of what you do, if you are planning on going on to an allied health profession or you know graduate school, having that experience is really going to set you up for success more so than you know your average student that has done all the coursework but really hasn't had an opportunity to you know get their hands in there and see what research is all about. That's a great point, and it kind of leads into uh, my final question: Is there any um, advice or? Uh, are there any recommendations that you would give to uh, majors within the kinesiology department um, at, at Cortland? Um, I think what I would really recommend is, you know, get as get in, I, I'd say get involved in, in as much as you can, you know, to really figure out what is it that I like, what is it that I'm passionate about or I'm interested in. I think it's really hard to know at 18 years of age what you think you're going to do for the rest of your life. So, you know, talk to your professors, see if there are opportunities to get involved in some of their research. You know, we have the FIT Club on campus. We have like a pre-PT group uh, or like a pre-med group. So there's student groups, uh, all sorts of intramurals for those of you that were an athlete that maybe don't want to compete at the collegiate level or club sports. Like just make connections on campus, really. Just immerse yourself in campus culture. There are so many ways to thrive academically and, and athletically and, and socially here. And, and certainly, I think um, the kinesiology department uh, sort of has things to offer in, in all of those areas. Dr. Platt, yeah. thank you so much for um, spending some time with us, sharing just some highlights about the, the kinesiology department. Um, we'll share some contact information so students can, can learn more. And we wish you uh, all the best this, this academic year. All right. Thanks so much, Mike. Take care. Bye.